Hey guys, it's Steve from GamersNexus.net and this is our next installment of Saturday Heat Signature. I hope you have your bowl of cereal ready because you are going to need something to spit at the screen when you're watching this video. It is such a cool game. We're talking about Hawken today, which is a mech combat FPS. Before I jump into that, I want to give, give a quick shout to Andrew Legendary Kate Coleman who developed the awesome intro video we now have for Heat Signature. Thanks Andrew for that. Let's dive into Hawken. Uh, Hawken, as I said, mech combat FPS. So you're a mech fighter. You're in a big, massive hulk that walks around and shoots missiles and bullets. We, we've all seen mechs before. You've seen Transformers, seen Mech Warrior games. And this is, when I saw these videos, it struck me as what the Transformers game always wanted to be, but never quite had the ambition or design or gaming expertise. And uh, sure, there were a couple Transformer games that were okay, but they were nothing really super spectacular. Also, when I see this game, I think of Battlefield 2042, of all, or 2142, of all things, because, uh, I don't know, I see these big ships in the sky, and they're battleships or flagships, and they totally remind me out of, of the titans that you jumped out of in 2142. If anyone even played that game out there, I think it was a pretty big failure, but Hawken is a free-to-play FPS. They will have in-game items to buy. I think they hinted at buying different weapons or different outfits, stuff like that. Hopefully nothing that will be super off-balancing, but again, it's free-to-play initially, so really, how much money is a weapon? You know, you can invest in a couple weapons here and there, and you probably won't hit the maximum price point of a brand new game. It is an independently developed game by Adhesive Games Limited, and they are using the Unreal Engine by Epic. I believe it is Unreal Engine 3, I'm sure it's some iteration of that. And as you can see in these videos, the combat is really fast paced, it has an integrated HUD, which is one of my favorite things, I really wanted to cover that for a second. It's basically when you have the HUD on the screen, just heads up display for those who don't know, on the screen just like normally, except you actually build it into something in the game so that it makes sense. For example in the game Grid, or in other racing games, you can actually disable the overlaid HUD, the two dimensional one and opt to use only the in-car HUDs. So it was kind of like driving an actual car because you had to rely on the actual speedometer, which of course is not as perfectly accurate, not as easy to see as a two-dimensional rendered HUD. And those two-dimensional ones do cheapen the value of games in my eyes. They do make it a little bit, they, they sort of ruin the immersion. But Hawken has perfectly integrated that HUD with your health, your ammo, all of these core details for your mech suit into the game so that it's actually part of your suit and that's that's just something that's really cool I think a lot of people don't really pay attention to it it deserves huge attention though because integrated HUDs is just they really bring you into the game they put you in the suit and you don't have these silly 2D interfaces to remind you that hey I'm playing a game right now and so that's just something I wanted to touch on really quick and as you watch this video you'll see his HUD his health rather in the bottom left in that circle it's normally in the hundreds and you can actually repair yourself or something to that extent, maybe power down, I'm not sure what the terminology that will be used is, but you can do some kind of self-healing and basically you'll see in this video that he's getting shot at and runs around the corner and sort of crouches down for like three seconds that he has while this guy is trying to find him and those three seconds give him enough health to run through the smoke and escape the scene and then eventually turn around and blow up his pursuer. So that's just that really illustrates how fast paced this game is. And I think the self healing mechanic is sort of cool. It's definitely not Unreal Tournament style, which is one of the biggest drop and pick up and power up based games out there. However, I have seen some stuff that looks to be like pickups. There are these green floating discs that you see in the background sometimes, so I think there may still be pickups in this game. But again, the self healing is a really cool mechanic that I think will help to keep gameplay alive, it'll take you away from what really sort of kills original Halo or kills Unreal Tournament and those types of games as much as I love power-ups, as much as I love big health packs. If, you, if you're so into the game that you step out of combat and actively go searching for health packs to pick up, even so far as going back to your base to find one, that really slows gameplay down, it's a chore, it's not fun, sometimes it's just more fun to die and then respawn, it's even faster. But self-healing will help prevent that, and it will make the game, uh, it'll keep things active, keep things going. Looking at the environment, jumping around a bit from mechanics to art, the artistic direction is beautiful in this game. As I said, it is based in the future. It is very, it actually reminds me a lot of the movie WALL-E that was put out a few years ago, and it's just, it's a, I don't want to say post-apocalyptic, because it isn't. Uh, they actually describe it as humans moved and colonized to a different, colonized a different planet, rather. 
uh, and after this colony was around for a while it sort of self-destructed, fell into tatters, and now they were left in perpetual war fighting over whatever resources are left on the planet. Just in terms of pure style, pure art, and storyline, the buildings really fit, everything fits together perfectly, it's solid. It really gives that destroyed, that dilapidated look that you would think a future setting would have. So now let's jump into gameplay mechanics. That we know that there are two major teams, the Alliance and the Coalition. We don't know a whole lot more about them beyond that. That's just what we see in the top left of the videos. You can see that they have energy levels of zero in some of these videos. From what the developers say in their official FAQ section of the website, which I will link in the description below, there will be four game modes immediately at launch. Two traditional, one is Team Deathmatch and the other is Free For All Deathmatch and then two unique game modes which are focused entirely on teams they have not revealed what they are yet but they are on the FAQ section as far as what we 100% know without speculation you do have two weapons on your suit for sure there's one on the left and one on the right in these videos we specifically see that on the left he's normally using missiles so I've seen a couple different types of missiles it seems that there's like a cluster missile that missile excuse me that sort of locks on it blasts out in a big spray radius and then centers back on the target to sort of close them in a bit and box them in and give you a higher chance of having some of those missiles hit and then on the right we typically see him using a machine gun which I don't really need to explain that we also see in the bottom right of the HUD there are HE charges he normally has three or two of them I would presume that's HE as in the HE grenades meaning fragmentation so those are uh, that's, that's that's just speculation I don't know 100% on that we do see that as he gets shot his health obviously goes down and once he gets critically wounded down to 65 or less health or 85 in some instances he, his suit does give a, a very violent shake and seems like it's knocked out of its its flight patterns I don't know if that's going to remain in the game or if that's just his timing in the videos but just some cool stuff I've noticed you can sign up for the closed beta right now on the left side of their website they will give you a code that you send to your friends and they'll click on the link and then you might get accepted into beta if you meet the requirements the open beta will be fully open to everybody on 12 12 12 December 12th 2012 which is only a few days before the mine apocalypse so we'll get a couple days to try it out and see how it is before the world ends that's it for heat signature for now guys please check back next week where we will be covering castle story and possibly even a different game that is a, a completely different genre from what we've been looking at so far so stay tuned we will have another heat signature every Saturday peace